Good afternoon, everybody. It's David Schlotthauer here with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion for Wednesday, September the 10th, 2025. In this tropical weather update, there are early signals from our ensemble model and deterministic models that tropical development is increasing with those chances by the time we go into about the 15th and the 20th of September. The question is, will we see our next tropical depression, tropical storm, or hurricane around this time of the year? In this video, we'll be breaking down all those details. But of course, if you haven't been here before and you do find these tropical weather outlook and discussions very helpful, detailed, informative, and life-saving, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell notification icon to get daily tropical weather updates and live tropical weather discussions and live coverage, including also by hitting the like button and sharing this video with your family and friends on social media. So with that being said, here's a look at the deep tropical Atlantic here on our GOES satellite imagery. And we can see that there is definitely a lot of convection, a lot of showers and thunderstorms taking place off of Africa. This is where we have a fairly moist air mass, but otherwise, most of the deep tropical Atlantic here in the main development region, such as the Caribbean and the Gulf and the southwestern Atlantic, looking nice and quiet. And that is all thanks to a very strong, sprawling ridge of high pressure across much of the subtropical Atlantic, known as the Bermuda High and the Azores High, keeping things in check with a lot of dry air, a lot of shear that we are dealing with right now. And it is going to be interesting whether or not will this next tropical wave develop underneath all of that tut activity. Here's a look at the latest National Hurricane Center seven day graphical tropical weather outlook. And you can see there is a 20% chance of tropical development here over the next seven days across much of the main development region of the Atlantic. And it is going to be interesting. Will this become our next attempt at seeing our next tropical depression or tropical storm? As we go into the middle to the latter part of September, there is a lot of disagreement in our ensembles, but there is a general signal right now that we're beginning to develop here in our ensembles that do show that development looks to be increasing as we go into about the 16th, the 20th of September. So with that being said, let's take a look now at our latest global computer deterministic models for this afternoon and evening. First of all, looking at the European deterministic model, then we're going to be looking at the European artificial intelligence model and then the global forecasting American model. And looking at the cyclonic relative vorticity here at the 850 millibar layer, you can see there is our tropical wave here, very broad in nature, not going to be the one that's actually going to develop into anything significant, but it's going to be beyond that, that we're going to need to be watching closely for the potential for tropical development. So going out to five days here on the European model for Monday next week on the 15th of September 2025, we can see there's that weak tropical wave that is now to the southwest of the Cabo Verde Islands. Here's another broad tropical wave here, and then there is more activity coming off of Africa. But although looking nice and quiet here, over the next five to six days. But beyond that is where we need to keep a close eye on what models are going to be showing here. And that's why we're going to be looking at the AI next. While the European model does not have any development here, which is also a realm of possibility here, we cannot always jump to conclusions that what I'm about to show you here is actually what's going to happen because our other models like the Euro are not showing any development at all over the next seven days. You can see there's a tropical wave here and here is more potential development coming off of Africa, more aggressive tropical waves. Now, by the time we go out to day 10, that is when things light up pretty quickly on the European model. We have a nice good tropical wave here that develops into maybe a tropical depression with winds of about 30 miles an hour, maybe 35. There's another tropical wave to its southeast across the main development region. And then here's another strong tropical wave coming off of Africa with winds that could support tropical depression intensity. And this would be for the 20th of September. So for Saturday morning on the 20th of September in 10 days or so, this is what we have going on out here on the European model. Okay, and then of course, beyond that, we'll see what all ends up happening. There's a lot of activity that the euro continues to indicate 
very far out in time. So what does this look like on the artificial intelligence model? The AI, by the way, did really well and handled 91L quite well um, recently. So this is a model to not mess with. This is pretty dang accurate and quite reliable. I'm still doing a little bit of experimental on it to see if it's actually going to be very reliable for next year's hurricane season. So I start using it a lot more than our deterministic models. But we can see with what this model is actually showing uh, in its forecast over the next, say, three days. You can see a nice good looking tropical wave here. Here's a much stronger tropical wave. That's the one that the NHC is watching really closely as we go forward um, out in time, uh, out to five days for early next week, you can see that tropical wave does try to develop a little bit more better circulation, especially out to day 10, where we have a wave here, we have a tropical wave here, we have a tropical wave here, we have another tropical wave here. I mean, this is pretty aggressive, uh, to say the least, on the artificial intelligence model out to 10 days. So, are things flipping around right now? Is the light switch flipping to on and all of a sudden things are waking up out there in the tropics? Very hard to say. I would like to see more consistency amongst our artificial intelligence model and our global deterministic models to pick up on this before I sound the alarm. But it doesn't look like I'm sounding the alarm just yet. Even so, we have a lot of tropical wave activity that is going to be increasing perhaps in the next 7 to 10 days. Now, going beyond that, um, out to about September the 23rd and the 24th, we can see that ends up trying to develop and consolidate into something a little bit more sinister. But this is 360 hours out, and at this point, we cannot take this seriously, really. This is very far out, the 25th of September, and a lock can change between now and the 25th of September. Now, it is quite interesting to see that the GFS model continues to be a sleepyhead beauty over here, not showing much in the way of tropical development over the course of the next seven days. And we will fast forward this uh, for you all to show you how hostile the background state could actually still end up being. Like literally, this is seven days. There is a little bit of mischief going on down here in the deep tropical Atlantic in the main development region. But otherwise, nothing in the way of tropical development at all. And then going all the way out to 10 days. Like, what? What? Like, GFS, hello, wake up, sleepy beauty. What you doing over there? I mean, it did have something in the Gulf. And it's just going all over the place. It doesn't have a mind of its own very well. It really doesn't know how to forecast because if it did, we would see some consistency. I mean, even the Canadian model, let's see if the Canadian model has something. Ah, yeah, it actually does for once. It has a tropical wave here. It has a tropical wave here and even a tropical wave over here. Yeah, the GFS is the only one snoozing out on any tropical development at this given time. Even the icon has tropical development with two tropical waves, as you can see here clearly on this map. Now, the big question is how much deep layer vertical wind shear will actually decrease? There are early signs finally from our ensemble prediction system from the Euro that the deep layer vertical wind shear is going to go away entirely, even perhaps in our subtropical region of the Atlantic, which is really hard to believe given the fact that we have all of this vertical wind shear lot of tut activity, drier air coming in from higher latitudes down into the deep tropics, keeping things really stable and hostile for us right now. But as we go forward in time, we can see that that vertical wind shear is going to decrease over the next 10 days, as you can see here, with below average deep layer vertical wind shear anomalies here highlighted in blue and turquoise across much of the uh, deep tropic of the Caribbean, the southwestern Atlantic, a little bit of tut activity still, though, off of the west coast of Africa, which could kind of snorf any development there coming off or smorf, I should say coming off of Africa, and then out to 360 hours out, this tropical jet here eventually slowly begins to subside 
while down here we continue to see very little vertical wind shear with well below average amounts across much of the deep tropical atlantic such as the caribbean the southwestern atlantic and the main development region which is quite interesting given the fact that again we are seeing a very hostile environment right now so now let's take a look at those latest ensemble models especially from the euro because it is beginning to kind of become more clustered lovey over here as far as our next tropical wave goes so this is the next tropical wave that's the first one that we are really keeping a close eye on for the potential for tropical development there has been a general southerly trend here and there's been a bit more clustering as far as our spaghetti tracks go here which gives us an idea that yeah i think we're beginning to see a little bit of an agreement here from our european ensemble although the signal for chances of this becoming our next tropical storm or hurricane remain fairly low we are certainly expecting at least some slow development with that tropical wave with what appears to be another strong signal with a secondary tropical wave coming off of Africa around the 10 day mark. So is this the beginning for a very busy period coming? I'm not going to declare that just yet because we saw with what happened with 91L, all of these ensembles, all of the deterministic, even the AI model was showing that, oh, 91L is gonna become our next tropical storm or hurricane. And at the last minute, all of the models backed off on that, including the ensemble. So I am not writing home or writing this off and say, oh, we are going to see a hurricane or a tropical storm. But at the end of the day, it is the peak of hurricane season, and we really do have to watch the deep tropics very closely. But given how hostile the background environment is going to be at least over the next seven to eight days, it is, I mean, it is very, very low right now. The chances are very low for any development, but there is a signal, and we see that on the GEFS and the European Ensemble. Now, looking at our Google DeepMind AI models, there is also a big clustering and a general shift southward right now, so bringing this a little bit closer to the Leeward Islands in about 10 days. And a second group of AI models, that's that second tropical wave that the AI model is picking up on, so we have to really keep an eye on that here and also here. So two separate systems that we're going to need to watch. And then looking at the Google generation deep mind model, also indicating a little bit of a signal here for our second tropical wave with a much stronger signal with that leading tropical wave for that to potentially become our next tropical depression, if not a tropical storm in about 10 days. But again, confidence right now is very very low a ride around a 5 to 15 to even 20 percent chance of that occurring now when taking a look at our latest velocity potential anomaly here on the european artificial intelligence ensemble forecast we can see any green areas indicate favorability in the deep tropical atlantic here you can see the thumbnail here for reference showing us what part of the deep tropics we're looking at Right now, there's a lot of hostility going on, all thanks to a lot of sinking air. So basically, subsidence, air warms, dries as, as it sinks, and that brings a lot of vertical wind shear also across in the Atlantic. So that is why things are closed for business for the peak of hurricane season for right now. But it does look like by the time we go to about the 15th and the 17th of September, I am holding it to the European artificial intelligence model that a very favorable window here for tropical development still looks to be a possibility, especially around that 17th through the 20th time frame when we have this best environment here with a lot of upward motion, thunderstorms, more moisture, less vertical wind shear to deal with. And that is why I think the back half of September still looks to be the potential here for a busy period. Looking at the actual deterministic ensemble prediction system from the Euro showing the same thing with a lot of favorability coming around the middle to the latter part of September, which isn't too surprising given our ensembles and the Google DeepMind model showing a little bit of TCG genesis out there in the main development region. So now when taking a look also at our phase diagram of the MJO here, and this is what I like to use in my videos to show you all and to illustrate with what we're dealing with. 
You can see right now the MJO is going to be moving into this null phase. So we kind of brief briefly got into phases two and three, but in a very low amplitude signal. Now we're going into the null phase and going back out into phases one and eight right now, but mostly phase one by the time we go into about the September 24th time frame. And this is pretty ideal for the Western uh, for the Western Hemisphere and Africa, uh, pretty much on our side of things, looking at a favorable window here for tropical development uh, by the latter part of September. Also looking at the European uh, deterministic and ensemble forecast, we can see that, yes, again, we're looking at this null phase. So basically no MJO activity between about now and about the 14th of September. But by the time we go outside of this window here, outside of the circle, which it does pretty notably, some of the ensembles showing a very robust signal here uh, into phases um, eight and one and perhaps into phases two. This is going to favor the Atlantic quite well with the potential for tropical development. And I would not be surprised if we see a couple of named storms before we end out September, perhaps even three or four named storms. We will see about that. But right now, things are looking very incoherent. And until we actually see this go back out into this realm of pot or this realm of region into phases one and eight, um, this is all basically in a fuzz, and we don't know exactly how this is going to all evolve just yet. Now, when looking at the sea surface temperatures across the Gulf and the Northwestern Caribbean, this is pretty concerning to say the least here. We are still seeing some very warm sea surface temperatures and perhaps still warming up a little bit down here in the deep tropical Gulf as well as the Western Gulf with sea surface temperatures still around the upper 80s, right around 88 to 89 degrees Fahrenheit. We're seeing sea surface temperatures around 89 to near 90 degrees across the far northwestern portion of the Caribbean. So all in all, thermodynamically, things are pretty dang favorable and unstable here in the Caribbean as well as the Gulf for hyperactive tropical activity perhaps for early October once the Central American gyre gets going. When we look at our actual sea surface temperature anomalies here, the deep tropical portion here of the Gulf, especially the Bay of Campeche, as well as the Western Gulf, water temperatures running about one to two to almost three degrees above normal, including for the northwestern portion there of the Caribbean. So, yeah, I mean, if we get something that tracks or moves across the Caribbean into the Gulf, it's going to have a lot of time where it can actually intensify quite quickly. And that is all thanks to upper ocean heat content. Any uh, purple colors here that you see indicate off the charts upper ocean heat content now across much of the Western Gulf, the Central Gulf, and now the Northwestern Caribbean. I mean, this is very, very bad. This is not good at all. There's a lot of upper ocean heat content being stored below the surface. So this would basically be your octane fuel and your energy to support violent hurricane production. And you can see the upper ocean heat content anomaly here showing a lot of reds and purples here indicating well above average to near record breaking upper ocean heat content on the 9th of September. This is always delayed by a day for many reasons because the data has to get processed. But boy, oh boy, I'm telling you right now, we are locked in for business potentially for a very busy October at least, or the first half of October could be hyperactive. I would not be surprised at all. But anyways, if you haven't been here before and you did find today's tropical weather outlook and discussion very helpful, detailed, informative, and life-saving, please don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel, folks. It really, really, really desperately helps out the YouTube channel very much because this stuff is not easy when it comes down to forecasting the tropics, whether or not we'll get into a very busy period. Please also hit that bell notification icon to get daily tropical weather updates, including live streaming tropical live weather coverage here on the YouTube channel. And please like the video if you haven't already. And please leave a comment in the section below this video. As always, have a great rest of your Wednesday afternoon here on the 10th of September for the peak of hurricane season, climatologically speaking. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll be back with you more tomorrow with another detailed tropical weather outlook and discussion.